Hello and welcome to KnowledgeBank.pro. We have a super fun DEX puzzle to solve today. Also, we will learn a thing or two about contains the row function. And as a bonus, we'll discuss how to do distinct counts on temporary tables. As usual, I will leave the link to the tutorial in the description of this video where you can download the Power BI model so you can take a look at the calculations and the data used in this tutorial. What is the fun DEX puzzle, you ask? Well, let's take a look at the data and find out. Our use case today has something to do with fraud. Fraud related to redemptions of coupons. So let's say we have a data set where in the first column we have the coupon ID or coupon number. In the second column, we have the coupon redemption, redemption date. And in the third column, we have the ID of the retailer where this coupon was redeemed. As usual, I like to keep the data set very simple. What is the problem? Well, the problem is really interesting. We're trying to figure out whether some of those coupons are fraudulent. And how do we define a fraudulent coupon? Well, it's the coupon, coupon that has been redeemed more than once. About the definitions, if you're a retailer, you're probably not gonna count the first time the coupon is redeemed as fraud. In our case, any coupon that has been redeemed more than once is fraud. And what we're trying to figure out is how much fraud are we experiencing across our retailers. And the approach to this calculation for the purposes of this tutorial is the following. We're gonna create a temp table that has all of our coupons that have fraud. And once we have a temp table with all fraudulent coupons, as we do our analysis by, let's say, a retailer or within a particular date, we can look at the subset of those coupons for this retailer or in that time frame, and then do a lookup in our overall Uber table with all fraudulent coupons. And those coupons that match to fraudulent coupons, we will, in our case, we'll just count. We just wanna know how many of those there are. So if you know SQL, we're gonna be implementing uh, a, an equivalent of if exists feature of select statement. Uh, I think it's a pretty interesting feature. It's very commonly used in SQL and uh, it's not always easy to do in DEX. So I will offer a possible solution of how that might be implemented using our contains row function. I will break the development of the calculation in several sub steps so that it's easier for you guys to track. Therefore, let me go to external tools, launch the DEX studio and get going on this. As I said before, the first step in our process is to create the table of all fraudulent coupons. So let's see how we can get it done. The first thing I'm doing here is I'm using a summarize function. And what I'm doing is I'm creating a summarize function where I'm looking into the coupons redemption table. I'm taking the coupons column and I'm adding another column to that column named redemption count. And all I'm doing is I'm counting how many times uh, that coupon was redeemed. And every time it's redeemed, there is a date associated with this. So as you can see, after I run it, I get a list of my coupons. And then for every coupon, I see the number of times it has been redeemed. So we could see that some of them have been redeemed one times, some of them redeemed have been redeemed two times, and some of them three times, and so forth. So how do we know which coupons are fraudulent? Well, those coupons that have the count more than one are fraudulent. So what do we need to do to, to turn that table of all coupons into fraudulent coupons? Just add a filter condition where redemption count is more than one. Let's do that. So here's the updated statement. I've surrounded my summarize with filter condition where redemption count is greater than one. Once I run this, all of the redemption counts equal to one should be gone. So after I ran this command, uh, I got back 84 different unique coupons. And as you can see, some of them have been redeemed twice. And if I keep scrolling down, here's some three times, and there's one coupon that has been redeemed four times. Very fraudulent. This code was already perfect, but I wanted to make it even more robust. And the way I make it even more robust by introducing calculate table command and making sure that we are always taking a look at the entire coupon table. What we don't wanna happen is have this calculation be shrunk to a particular retailer or a particular time period, which will then make us make it impossible for us to see some of the coupons outside of this window. The coupon is either fraudulent or not. So to, for us to do this correctly, we, we need to take a look at the entire data set every single time. So now that we have the temp table with all of the fraudulent coupons, it's time to take a look at our contains row function and figure out how we can implement that exists clause 
that we love in select statement in SQL. So the first thing I did, I took our expression for the temp table and I've written it into the variable called bad coupons. So the variable bad coupons will have a table that will consist of all fraudulent coupons. So now the question is, in the subset of the data that we have in a particular time frame or for a particular retailer, how many of those coupons also exist in our temporary variable? So what's gonna help us with this is the count rows function because it'll calculate number of rows in the subset that match our criteria. But first what we need to do is we need to shrink all of the coupons that uh, have been redeemed for the retailer to those that are only fraudulent. So let's see how I do this using the contains row function. So now let's say we're looking at a subset of data for a particular retailer. So what we wanna do is we wanna filter that subset only to fraudulent rows. How do we do this? The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create a filter and we're gonna filter only those rows that are fraudulent. How does that work? We're gonna use the contains row command and this is a really, really cool function that implements that if exists lookup. So what this will do, it will say, uh, make a list of all of the coupons, unique coupons in the bad coupons table. The reason we need to use summarize command is because we're only gonna be doing a match on one field coupon. And in our temporary table, if you could see, we have two columns, coupon and redemption count. So summarize, uh, so the contains row function is kind of kind of picky. So however many parameters I use after the name of the table in which I will be looking up my values, uh, my the table in which I will be looking up should have the same amount of columns. So in this case, I'm gonna be doing looking up just one value of a coupon. Therefore, the table in which I will be looking it up should only have one column. And that's the only reason I'm using summarize. If I had a table that only had one column in it to begin with, I could have just specified that table here instead of summarize. Effectively, what this filter condition does is the following. It's gonna take a look at all of the coupon transactions that have been filtered for this time frame or this retailer. And then it's gonna do if exist, or it's gonna look up one row at a time in our lookup table, in the temporary table with all fraudulent coupons. And if the coupon exists in that table, it's gonna leave it in our filter. If the filter does not exist, that record is gonna be filtered out. So on one hand, you're probably saying, well, there you go. You already have all of the coupons that are fraudulent. So by the time the filter command is done, you have a list of coupons that are bad. The problem is that this list is not unique and we need to implement a distinct count. And I wanna know exact distinct amount of coupons that are fraudulent. And the issue is that because this filter is a temp table, it's another temp table, Unfortunately, I cannot use a distinct count function with that, with that table. And the reason I cannot use the distinct count, not just distinct count, a bunch of functions that require a column name as a parameter. The reason I cannot use this temporary table is because there's no way for me to specify that column name into, the, into this function. So if I cannot use distinct count, then there's gotta be a different way for me to count number of distinct values. And that's exactly why we're using count rows and summarize. So filter will give us all of the coupons that are bad. Then the summarize command will give me a list of unique coupons. And now I can safely count rows in that table. That will give me the distinct count of all of the fraudulent coupons. So let's look at this calculation very quickly again, just to make sure that everything is clear. Step one, make a table of all bad coupons for all retailers the entire period of time. We're gonna save that temporary table in a variable, bad coupons. Step two, we're gonna look at all of the coupons that we can see giving our current selection. So if we're looking at one retailer at a time, we're only looking at a subset of coupons. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through all of those coupons one at a time and use contains row function that will look up the current value of the coupon in a subset in our temp table and then if it is, if it exists in our temp table, we leave it in our data set. If it does not exist, we take it out. So by the time this filter command has run, we have a list of all of the coupons that are bad. But because fraudulent coupons will be repeated because they have been redeemed many times, we need to make a unique list. That's what we're gonna achieve with the summarize command. And now that we have a summarize command, we can do a count rows 
that's going to give us a distinct count of all of the coupons that are bad in our selection. Now it's time to do some analysis. As you can see, I created a couple of tables here, or a couple of charts rather. So I've also created two more calculation. One calculation to cal calculate number of distinct coupons in the data set, all coupons, not just fraudulent. I'm just using distinct count, very simple. And then I created a fraud calculation. So the way we calculate our fraud is all we need to do is just divide divide fraud coupons by the distinct coupon count. Lastly, I just created two different visuals to try to tell the same story. In the first one, we're looking at all of our retailers and uh, we're gonna show number of bad coupons and we're also gonna create conditional formatting by the fraud percentage. So we see that Big Ben's retailer has the lowest fraud at 14% and God's Soul retailer has the highest fraud percentage at 16%. My question to you is, and please leave the answer in the comment, which one of the table of these charts do you think tells a better story? So um, I'm a big fan of the scatter plot because that puts things in perspective and I'm able to visually trend all three variables. So in our case, I could see number of bad coupons in the Y axis, um, number of the fraud or value of the fraud in the Y axis and the size of the bubble tells me total number of coupons redeemed per retailer. So that really helps me put things in perspective. Sometimes I talk to customers and they find scatter plots confusing. So if you don't mind, please leave in, in, a, in, a, in comments what you think, which one of these two charts tells a better story. I'm really looking forward to hearing uh, for your feedback and uh, I see if your uh, feedback will validate what I think uh, is the better option. That's about it for today. Go ahead and download the tutorial at the link that I will post in the description. Thank you for stopping by and I'm looking forward to see you back soon. Thanks. Bye.